Hello Internet, welcome back to the YouTube channel, or my wife's YouTube channel. Uh, I'm your host for this evening's festivities, or mornings, depending on where you are. You'll know me. Whatever, I'm being dramatic for the flair. For the flair. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> well, now you're judging me. Uh, this is the, the channel's leader, creator, leader, creator, is Siri. It's her channel. Hi. I'm just the husband, but today it's my video, damn it. Uh, and I'm Carson, you know that already. If, welcome back. If you're new here, please do that algorithm -y stuff, the likes, the comments, the shares. And the subscribes. And the subscribes. <laughs> All of them together in tandem. Make your grandma subscribe. Make your grandma like and comment. Whatever. It helps us out. And if you're returning, what do you usually say to returning people? Thank you for coming back to watch another video. Oh, that's it? Oh, just, oh, thanks. Thanks for coming. See, I'm still new to this hosting gig. Oh, God. Um, Okay, what are we talking about today? From the title, um, well, at the time of filming, I don't know what you officially don't even know we're going to call it. You don't know what the title is. Yeah, I don't know, but from the title, you can tell it's uh, to do with um, being a white Western boy and dealing with, well, we're, we're going to keep it specific to Nigeria today. Nigerian, I, you know, probably broadly West African, or, and in some ways African cultural stuff, but let's... Let's speak for Nigeria. Yeah, let's speak for Nigeria, because... Uh, that's just that's obviously, what we know and that's yeah. where I'm from. And so obviously uh, wifey wanted me to talk about this today because sometimes it's fun to do like just me talking videos but this is obviously stuff that deals with a culture that I'm not from. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like married into and I didn't really feel comfortable just ranting about Nigerian culture by myself. I just yeah. don't think that would be a good look for anybody involved. Yeah. So how I thought uh, we would do it. I'll, I'll bring up a point mm -hmm. and then maybe I'll just bounce it off you. Maybe just, you'll have maybe let's you'll just go with the flow. Yeah, I'm saying maybe you'll have something to say, maybe yeah, you won't. So I will definitely I'm not just gonna sit here the whole time. You'll definitely have something <laughs> please, to say. Please, please give me something to work so with. So let's just go. Let's just go. Wonderful. Right also, no braids. How's that looking? Ain't it look good? We got a vlog for that soon. It's good times. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> so I got three things I want to talk about today. Okay. Let's start easy. Let's get a little appetizer. No, start with the big one. Really? You don't like, wanna you don't wanna work into it? Okay, start with one little one. Yeah, Big one in the middle and end with a lighter one. Well, the other two are not light. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Stop. So just what appetizer, appetizer. Okay, Here we appetizer. go. Appetizer. Something I'm getting used to mm -hmm. that I think is still going to take me a while to get used to. And you gave me a hard time in the other vlog about this food. Now Nigerian food. So far, I all the Nigerian food basically has. I've either been like oh, okay or mm -hmm. I've like loved it. I haven't had a Nigerian food. I don't think that I've actively like disliked. Mm -hmm. I've had foods that I'm like, it's not for me, but I haven't, yeah. I, but also I'm not a very picky person. Yeah. That being said, something that has taken me really hard time to get used to. Yeah. Now, portion wise, we had that funny argument where you were like, don't drown your rice in my sauce. Yeah. Whereas I just want a whole bowl of sauce, but that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the, um, as you would call them, swallows. Okay. The garis, the foo-foos. The pounded yams. The pounded oh yams. God. Look, they don't taste bad. I, I've enjoyed them, but from my time in Nigeria, yeah. actually, I, I distinctly remember your dad eating on our wedding day, and I was just like, damn, look at that Nigerian man just crush that. I forget what he was eating, okra soup, I think it was. Okay. Um, but just like the portion of like, you'll get like okra soup, and it'll be like this lovely little aesthetic bowl of okra soup. And then the pounded yam that comes with it is like the size of a that's goddamn not football. True. No, that's not true. For soup, soup and pounded yam always match the portion except like one to one no except if you're eating out you know in restaurants some restaurants <laughs> sometimes they can be very uh, stingy with oh, portions so they... yes rest mm. i hate restaurants that are stingy with portions but if it's like at home you're serving your own food at home at least in my household the the soup always always every time matches like mm. Your pounded yam, like the portion, there's never one that's too small or mm. too big or whatever. Well, I'm just gonna say this isn't like a Canadian culture thing. I think it's just a personal thing. Yeah, I think this uh, is for you. me. For me, I'm a big boy. I like to eat, but I also don't like to like eat to gain weight. Obviously, I'm trying to manage my weight, be a healthier-minded person, not yeah. overeat. And seeing that much or that many starchy carbs yeah, in like a pile. Yeah, tastes so No, no, it's, it's good. good, it's good, it's it's not bad. I'm not saying it tastes bad. All I'm saying is like, for me, I'm just like, 
Can I just have more of the veggie? For people who don't know what pounded yam is, I'm going to pick the picture right here. This is Bing! pounded yam. But make yam. sure you put it here, This because last time I pointed, and then you put the picture over here, and I because looked like a Because my head was here. That's okay. why I'm moving. So okay, there we go. Pounded yam is going to be here. Pounded yam. Yeah. Pounded yam. Pounded yam. There's so many. There's pounded yeah. yam, there's ebba, there's right. amala, there's a fufu. I've never heard of amala before. Amala is very... It's very Yoruba, like oh, okay. West. Yoruba, well, again, Western, we don't need yeah, it. This yeah, is yeah. a food video, so yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, adjusting to the 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 amount of like starchy carb, like the staple foods, mm -hmm. is taking some getting used to. Because I'm I want the meat and the veggies yeah. uh, of whatever I'm eating. In Korea, it's the same thing. If we're going out for barbecue, I'm like, give me the meat, give me all the veggies. I the rice, I'll have a little bit, but I, I just don't even want Why it. Why am different? I want lots of rice. Yeah. So like. <laughs> When it's like stew and stuff, you're like, take the rice and put the stew. And I'm just like, give me a bowl of stew. Yeah, okay. Um, when it's so. rice and stew, yes, for sure. That is just how, I th again, I will speak for my health, but I feel like it's normal. There is more rice and not, not like lesser stew, but not as much as the rice. I don't get it, man. Because we don't drown our rice in stew. Nigerians, <laughs> I said this in the last video, the, you guys make bombing, like bombing, banging sauce. <laughs> your, 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 so, your shrimp sauces, your, your, um, chicken your, stew. your chick chicken stews, all of it is like totally banging. <laughs> Rice is good, but like if you give me a cheesecake, a whole cheesecake, and then you say you have to eat this bag of plain potato chips with the cheese, just give me the whole cheese. You, you can just leave the potato chips to the side. I want the whole cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about like Nigerian stews and I stuff. Get it. Anyways, mild, mild gripe. It's just an adjustment for me. It's something. Yeah. Um, the other two. Let's have a I, are, I know already. I know you can already. I know I, you know I one. The other two. I already know one of what he's gonna talk about. Not because he told me, but because. But I, you could guess. I just know. You could guess. So yeah, go ahead with your disclaimer. Disclaimer. Bing. Um, I should have. I should have. I should have written this down. Disclaimer. This is not a condemnation of a culture that I am not from. I am not saying that this cultural practice is bad necessarily. I'm not saying any culture is inferior or anything like that. That's not what this is. This is a, cause, the, cause this is for the last two. The last two are kind of heavier topics, right? Yeah. Um, one of these things happens in my culture, culture, white North Americans, <laughs> in my country, and one does not. Yeah. And, but both of them, are fairly widespread in the world i struggle with them personally if you don't struggle with them that's great so because i know i'm gonna get comments being like ah whatever this thing it's not a big deal to me great that's great for you i'm happy for you mm. for my personal beliefs on both of these subjects i struggle with it and for the one we're going to talk about i know nigerian women struggle with it too because i've read nigerian authors on the subject All right, let's dive right in. can you guess what is it Bride price. Bride price. There Dowry. it is. Ba boom. Ba boom. Down. Okay. So where to, where to start? Okay. Look, it's not bride price particular. Dowries in general. Um. Look, dowries. I don't care what culture you're from. I challenge you. Show me a dowry that historically has not just been a an exchange of property as literally a price for a woman. Um. I don't know how else to put it, guys. Dowries existed in, in European society, too, for a long time. Dowries exist in East Africa. They existed in Southeast Asian cultures. I'm not an expert on dowries all over the world. All I'm saying is every dowry I've ever seen comes from a cultural position of like, hey, we're like an old medieval society, and um, we want... Uh, you want to marry our daughter? Yeah. You want to bring our daughter? Well, you have to give us a dowry and whatever. And... <sighs> no matter how it's framed, no matter how you say this is how it's been done for a long time and whatever, <laughs> it still to me just looks like you're buying a woman. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm not going to lie and say I don't get where you're coming from because I feel like maybe in the past it has been like that. But just like cultures, over time, mm -hmm. everything evolves, everything changes, practices change. The way people view some practices change over time, even though mm -hmm. they still do those things, right? Just like how people say Christmas was like a pagan holiday yeah. before. But now Christmas is no longer a pagan holiday, but Christians all over the world still celebrate Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. That is the same thing, right? And I would say nowadays, 
in the Nigerian culture, or I would speak for my family, I don't want to speak for everybody because I've had all the, I have it, were eight girls in my house and I've had, out of those eight girls, I, I think five girls get married already. So I've seen traditional marriages, I've seen dowry being paid in my household. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that in my family, it's not like uh, you're buying my daughter or whatever. It's like we are appreciating the dad. and. The dad, like the the parent, like your dad. We're appreciating the parents because you're paying you're paying the dowry to the girl's parents. Right. Yes, yeah, so it's like we're appreciating you for, you know, bringing up a well loving whatever good character girl up, and this is all saying this is a way of saying thank you and for giving your daughter to us. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's what it is. And also, one thing you would know with dowry, I don't want to anger any Igbo people here Igbo people, <laughs> Igbo people please don't come for me I beg you Igbo is a tribe in Nigeria every tribe in Nigeria has what they ask for dowry right mm -hmm. it's a very known wealth fact that in the Igbo land it's really expensive like the things they ask blah 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 but where I'm from and I'm Delta and I'm Robo again this differs family to family because you can see some families in the Robo land who would ask you for an arm and a leg but my family thank will, god will, <laughs> Thank God your family's not like this because it would be such an issue and it's, it's not. It's so funny because my brother is getting married to an Igbo girl <laughs> and so, this is just a little direction. My brother is going to get married to an Igbo girl so they went to the girl's family because they do introduction. Introduction is basically like the family is meeting each other yeah, yeah, yeah. first mm -hmm. and that's where they talk about okay this is what we're going to need, this is what you're going to bring and my it's mom... It's they negotiate It's price. not negotiated. It's not negotiated mm -hmm. and this is and they give you like a list of things you need to bring and my mom and my dad was like it's like oh this way I've been having, I've been pitying on my in-laws. Carson is my next in-law to do marriage, right? I would pity. <laughs> he was joking. He looked know, like a dying. No, on no, but see, but, he, but here's, so this is the difficulty. This is why I struggle <laughs> with this so much. Even with like really like open-minded, progressive, like 21st century Nigerian women and men do this, right? They'll be like, look, the cultural practice has evolved. Of course it has. Mm -hmm. it, it, I'm not gonna dis I'm not gonna dispute that. Yeah. I'm not saying that that and again it's not my culture. So if you say it's evolved, I will take you at face value. Yeah. Great. But they say that and then they're like, so it's not really like a transaction anymore. It's more like a like a show, yeah, of, a respect. show of respect for the family. And I'm like, great, I'm on board with this. I, I'm, I'm here, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm with you. And then you're like, the families meet and they discuss what you have to bring. And I'm like, so that's not a price? And and you just said it and we've had this conversation before and I've had this conversation with your sister. Yeah. Obruche, this is for you. So they're like, I'm like, so just to be clear, Family, my family, your family meet and they discuss what my family has to bring yeah. for the bride price. Yeah. But it's not a price. And you're like, no, it's not a price. It's just like something that you are bringing to appreciate my yeah, family. Okay, wait, 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 okay. wait. So what happens if I disagree? What? Exactly, it's a price. Boom, it's still a price. No, you just admit because, just hear me out, okay. follow, follow my thought. Okay. So let's hypothetical, okay? okay? Pure hypothetical. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this, guys. I can tell. Pure hypothetical. Okay. Your dad comes to my my family, yeah. and and we're like, hey, what's up, dad? Because like her dad and my and me, like I've got a pretty good relationship with your family, I think. So your dad, let's say your dad is a little harder on this, mm -hmm. right? Your dad says, or your mom and dad, or your family comes and said, okay, you got to bring. I don't know, whatever it is. You gotta bring uh, this much money, yeah. and I don't know, what do you usually bring? Food and drink and stuff? Um, food, drink, some clothing items and stuff. Like okay, that. I'm just gonna <laughs> rail off random clothing <laughs> items. I'm not, so let's say your dad says, okay, we would really like it if you brought three bolts of cloth and uh, two crates of whatever, drink, food, drinks, yeah. beer for the wedding, blah, 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 yeah. okay? Okay, what happens if I say, okay, I like that, but not that? What happens next? What do you mean you like that, but not that? What happens if I say, that's good, I'm not bringing that. Why don't you want to bring that? No, regardless, just make up an excuse, whatever. I can't afford it, or I don't well, want it, to, whatever, it, no, no. It, no, what? that, that's what I want to answer your question. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. I'm going to answer your question. Sorry, my bad, my bad. I'm going to speak for my family yes. again, because that's all I know. Right. There is no like 
setting stone like this is what you have to bring right okay. there's always like a consideration right like for example if i have an in-law that's like a billionaire and i have an in-law that's just a regular nine to five right. junk yeah, yeah, yeah. guy my dad is not gonna to be fair my dad would never even do that but let's just say for example my dad <coughs> is not gonna tell the billionaire to bring a bazillion thing and tell this regular guy to bring okay. the same bazillion things R get rid of the material idea of like can't afford or can't afford yeah let's say Regardless, I can afford these things mm -hmm. for any whatever reason. But you don't want to. I don't want to bring this stuff. I say no. I, I, I don't think that would hinder the marriage in any way, at least for my family. For my family. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that would hinder right. the marriage. But okay. then, but then again, what about the rest? I would say, to be fair, I don't really know what the specific lists are that they give you, but I would say there are some things in the list that. Especially things that are like for the father and for uh -huh. the mother. I feel like those things you have to bring them. But it's like the small thing right. for like I don't know the uncle or this auntie in one place or the brothers or the siblings of the sisters. Those things. Better. Guys, let me ask you this question: What do you call something when you want something? You would like a good or a service, <laughs> and they say you have to provide me with X in exchange. No negotiate. Well, maybe it's negotiable, but generally speaking, X is what I need to give you. It's y. an exchange. What do you call it? It's an exchange. Mm. It's trade by butter. You give me this, I give you this. Mm. But don't look. That's not how Sounds you should look at it because that's not what it is. But it is. <laughs> that's not what it is. But you're literally saying, okay, I want to get married. <laughs> You I don't think we'd see eye to eye. I know, before. but this is the discussion that this is and this is why I'm I really don't curious on it. Be too long. No, I know, but I'm really curious about what uh Nigerians think about this too, because it's like, okay, let's not talk about your family for a second. Let's just talk about the concept in general. Okay. If I go to uh your family and I say, Okay, I'd like to marry your daughter, and they say, Okay, you have to bring X, Y, and Z, and I say, Okay, I can bring X and Y, I'm not gonna bring Z. And they go, why? And I go, I don't know, I just don't want to. Mm -hmm. Is the wedding off? No. Statistically speaking, would the wedding be off? Maybe 30% out okay. of 100? How, how, okay, let me rephrase the question. How often would it be a problem? I mean, it would be a problem. Exactly. Why? To some families. Yeah, to, well, some? To some families. Some or most? I'm not trying to interrogate you, I'm just saying, like, I lucked out in this particular regard. Like, You're happy but, I'm not evil. Yeah, maybe, but <laughs> this is my point, is as an outsider, you can see how it's very hard not to look at this as a transaction. You can call it an exchange, but that an exchange and a transaction are basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. A transaction is I give you money, I give you currency, you give me a thing. An exchange is basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. I give you something of value for something of value. And I don't want to look at a person, particularly my beautiful wife, as that. And so I struggle with this cultural practice. I, I know people are just going to shrug and be like, like you, like you said, and say, well, it's not this. But when it looks like a duck, and it sounds like a duck, and it swims like a duck, you can't just say, ah, but it's not a duck, guys. It's a goose, and that's so different. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's that's all. And again, <laughs> I'm in the minority on this one. I come from one of probably the few cultures that no longer has any sort of real dowry as far as I know. I mean, you could probably argue, but I, I think most cultures have this. So again, this is not a criticism of the culture you come from. Mm -hmm. This is something that as an outsider of that culture coming in, it is hard for me to just shrug off because I wouldn't... I, I as a, especially as, as a white man in this in this world, I try really hard not to objectify the women in my life for any reason. Yeah. So then being put into a situation where historically it was an objectification, and yeah, maybe it's evolved, but it still has like bits and pieces of objectification is really hard for me. We're running out of time. We're gonna pause here. We're gonna change the batteries on the camera or the storage, and we'll be right back. We're gonna we're gonna move on to number three. Let's let's put a pin in this. What do you guys think? I know I'm gonna get grilled in the comments. I'm gonna enjoy it though. I'm gonna be in there. Remember, I'm Rowdy Mouse. Here's my thing right here. But ding, that's my profile. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, we're back. We got the footage all transferred. Let's roll into number three.
That's our final one, right? Wow. Yes, yes. We only have the number three. three. Number oh. two is like the big contentious one, I think. But I think number, number three. Okay, so let me put it to you this way. Number two, I think more people have more to say, mm -hmm. but I actually care about it less than number three. This one for me mm -hmm. is non-negotiable. Sorry, I think I need to adjust this a bit. Okay. This one for me is non-negotiable. What is it? Oh, I know. Okay, big. Big disclaimer, here we go. Disclaimer I'm time. Gonna disclaim my yeah, game. because I feel like you already put out a disclaimer. No, but this ah. this disclaimer is really important both to okay. me and our audience. Okay. okay. I'm not saying multiple things. Because this one I feel so strongly about it, because it's non-negotiable. I'm not saying this is a Nigerian thing. Mm -hmm. This exists in in my neck of the woods as well. It's not a white person thing or a black person thing or anything like that. This problem, and it is a problem, exists all over the world. I'm dying to get but this. In, and again, anecdotal, my personal experience. Okay. If I was at a casino and there were five Africans mm -hmm. and five Western people, uh, it doesn't matter if they're black or white, Africans versus West, and you told me which group is more, well, it doesn't have to be five, but whatever. Which group is more likely to have experienced this? I'm putting money over here every okay, time. Okay, tell us what it is. Childhood discipline practices. <gasps> Mm -hmm. I did not see yeah, that coming. You didn't see it coming. I'm a teacher. I teach, well, now I teach teenagers. I, I used to teach little kids. Mm -hmm. You don't hit your kids. Don't do it. It's non-negotiable for me. Non-negotiable. The science is clear. There is 50 years, 50 years of behavioral science that says multiple things. Number one, hitting children in a weird way makes them more likely to be violent when they're older. Naturally, they've learned that hitting kids is okay. So that one's obvious. Number two, we can predict with a really, really creepy accuracy sexual preferences, not sexual orientation, but like kinks and stuff with people that were physically abused as children. And that doesn't just mean hitting. I mean belts. I mean all kinds of phys physical punishment. Uh -huh. um, there's that. Uh, what was the other one? Um, I forget what I was going to say for number three, but hitting kids is wrong. It's objectively wrong. I don't care if you're from China, Nigeria, South Africa, anywhere in Europe, Canada, it doesn't matter. White people hit their kids, black people hit their kids, you shouldn't do it. Now, let me rebut because every single time I say this, I hear this in the comments, mm -hmm. I hear this from people around me. I was hit as a kid and I turned out fine. First of all, no you didn't because you think it's okay to hit kids, so you didn't turn out fine. Second of all, nobody uses that logic with anything else in your life. If I drank drunk and high as a kite on heroin and I got home and I was like, Hur! and you were like, what the hell are you doing? I would never use the logic of, well, I got home, didn't I? That doesn't make it okay. Just because you survived a gunshot wound to the head, it doesn't mean you should play with a loaded pistol to your head. So please, don't come into the comments and say, well, you know, I was beat as a kid and I turned out fine. You didn't turn out fine. You think it's okay to hit kids. Second point, why do people, this is what's so really screwed up about this to me. Mm -hmm. If I hit a Siri, <coughs> excuse me, I just ate some spicy food and it's still kind of stuck in my throat. <coughs> if I hit you, is it wrong? Of course, of course it's wrong. <laughs> of course it's wrong. Of course it's wrong. Everybody watching, of course it's wrong. And it is wrong. Of course, spousal abuse, not okay. But if I hit my kid in front of you, let's assume the kid misbehaved. Mm -hmm. If I hit my son, you feel differently, don't you? <laughs> Why do we feel differently hitting a grown ass woman who can defend herself, who understands what's happening? Why is that not okay? But hitting a small child who, one, probably doesn't know why they're in trouble because they're young and you kill, every child does dumb things. That's what kids do. They don't have a fully developed brain. Two, they can't defend themselves. And three, they're getting hit from a position of somebody who is their love and their caretaker is hurting them. Why do we as people all over the world, but specifically I've noticed in black communities, and again, I don't want to, or I should say African communities, because I'm not going to speak for people outside of the communities that I have been invited into. Yeah. Why is this okay? So 
I have yet to hear any sort of argument of this other than a couple of things. Number one, I already said, well, I got hit as a I kid like and I'm I turned out fine. I'm not going to, you're just talking, 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 I'm just... Well, I just, I want to make sure I'm very clear about my position because I, one of my big pet peeves is when people misunderstand what I'm trying to say and then they type a I giant essay and I'm like, well, you kind of waste your time. I so, um, I, I think that's it. Okay, yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, why are you asking me again? Well, I, I know you don't agree with me on this subject, to no. a degree. Okay, okay, okay. This is it. I don't agree with hitting your child because I was bit mm -hmm. by my parents. We were whoops, our ass, we came. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not a nice feeling. And obviously, I don't think our parents did it from a place of not love. I think that's one thing I should put out there. Um, our parents are doing it from a place of like they don't love us so they're gonna hit us. I think it's from a place of this is how they know to parent. Yeah, no absolutely. I don't think most people hit their kids out of maliciousness. I'm actually, I'm including spanking by the way. Uh, the, the evidence for the physical- The light spanking? Spanking is also statistically- Light spanking? What do you mean by light spanking? Yes. Physical punishments. That is nothing. The science is clear on this. The science <laughs> is as clear as the science that says if you don't breathe air, you'll die. The science is literally, you can go into a behavioral specialist's office mm -hmm. and be like, I have this problem, this problem, this problem. They will. Okay, but why is this a culture shock to you dating me because or being with me? Because it's, it's not only like Nigerian culture that does this. I mean, I'm on like the shade room which is like mm -hmm. a black um, mm -hmm. instagram blog and i mean once in a while when they do things like this or like if you see black comments or like on twitter or whatever mm -hmm. you see like people from like western world saying yeah. so it's not like a cultural shock to you okay no that's a that's a good question and a fair point yeah. what i would say is it, it's not so much that it doesn't occur in white households yeah even it's white that, households it's yeah. that it is a couple of things, significantly rarer. Now, I don't have any evidence to back that up, but I just mean in my own personal experience, mm -hmm. I don't hear white people back home being like, ah, sometimes you gotta reset their brains. I know, you laugh, and that, that's the difference, right? That's the difference. To me, that's not funny, like, <laughs> ugh. Anyways, so, so there's that, um, but also, in my experience, mm -hmm. African black people specifically, are way more likely to defend that. Lots of white people will be like, well, I was hit as a kid. I got hit a couple times. I remember every single time, by the way. Um, you know, I was like two, some of my earliest memories and stuff. But, um, where was I saying? Oh, Africans in, in my life are usually the first to not only say, yes, this happened to me, but also say, and it was a good thing. Most white people I know, again, my personal experience, White people I know say, well, I was hit as a child. Yeah, it was it was dumb or it was a waste of time or I'm not gonna continue that cycle. Mm. Um, so for me, it's just frustrating to talk to Africans in particular in your family and some of my African friends here about this topic because like, again, I don't know how to say it any clearer than the science is clear. The science is clear, it's not a, like a, well, maybe, it, like, they know. You can predict with, like, nearly pinpoint accuracy yeah. the effects of physical punishment on kids. And what frustrates me is when I say, well, you shouldn't hit kids, people, they, uh, this is like a defense mechanism people do. They go to the other end and they go, oh, so what? Your kid does a bunch of stuff and you're just going to, like, be a typical white parent and, like, let them run wild? No, nobody said that. There's a billion ways to set boundaries and discipline kids and teach them uh, like proper, I, I don't know if the word is punishment, but teach them that their actions have consequences and teach them disciplinary lessons that don't involve physical punishment. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I get what you're trying to say, but I kind of feel like, should this be added to this video? Because, I don't know, I don't, like I said, this isn't just West African specific. Okay, well, no, let me, let me, let me push back on that. Mm -hmm. You were beat in school. Yeah. That is, that hasn't been a thing in Canada for probably, oh, at least 50 years. Mm -hmm. Now, and again, yeah, okay, so some teacher got angry and took a slit swing at kid, but th those people get, that's not like school practice. I don't think, I don't think caning students has been a thing since like okay, no, World War One. Caning students. Or whatever, no, slapping kids. If anybody caned, first of all, I would 
first of all, we're probably not going to live in a society where my child will be caned. Right. But best believe if anybody caned my child, I don't care who you are, I'm coming to fight you. Right, and let's be clear, I'm not suggesting that you personally are like, yeah, let me whoop some kid's ass. That's not what I, I'm saying. I'm not coming for you yeah. either. I just, yeah, it, it, it's, again, it's not unique to Nigerian culture, but... Nigerian culture in this way is very different than my okay, own. I get what you're trying to say. It is a taboo okay. in my I culture. I get what you're trying to say. It's not. It's not unique to Nigerian culture, but Nigerian culture encourages it. Maybe, or at, at the very least, it's it's, it's not it's not it's not something people frown over. Yeah, you you could if we're if we're at a if we're at a restaurant in and, Nigeria. And I agree with you. Yes, kay. it's not something people frown over in Nigeria. I think even till now, present day. It's still one of the ways of like disciplining yeah. your child, and I personally don't agree with it. Uh, I always joke with Carson every time I say he thinks I'm serious. She likes to rile me. But up. I always joke with Carson and be like, "Why would I spank my child?" But I know I wouldn't. Spunk. Let me not say never. Never say never. Sometimes the hands might just happen, but you don't know. <laughs> but that's. But this is my this is point. Nice. It's so easy. <laughs> it's. So but it's like. It's so easy to pick Carson's bones when it comes to conversations like this. Because like, you're talking about hitting a kid. I don't know why that's okay. funny. Okay, it's not funny. Oh. Let me stop laughing. It's not funny. Um, yeah. Thank you. I was hit. I was beat by my parents as a child. And like I said, it's not because my parents don't love me. It's because that's the best way they know. Yeah. But I would say... Um, Okay, now I feel like this is gonna be so long, guys. This video is gonna be so long. Just it's accepting, fine. just it's accepting fine. Don't the way it is. We're sorry. This topic is kind of interesting, and there's mm -hmm. lots to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, I when you say, but I was hit, and I I turned angry. Okay, that one it's a bit. I don't know where I stand with that because there are some. Where am I going with this? There are some things that I did as a child that my parents whooped my ass for beat me for sure and those things i never did again because the fear of the whatever beating mm -hmm. but obviously there are some things that even though my parents use all everything in this world to beat me i would still go back to do those things right so i would not i would try to count not like i'm not like i'm saying you should beat your child but i'm just trying to count out what you said when you say oh i was beat and i turn out right i not like turn out right per se but i'll feel like there are some things that obviously there, there would have been better ways to teach your child not to do these things yeah. but there are some things that i know personally for me that i did that my parents beat me for and i don't do those things right. anymore so in some way with their method it worked but i'm not saying that method is the best method right so and and let's let me be clear again i'm not saying that physical punishment can't deter kids from doing things. I'm not saying it's not effective. Mm. What I'm saying is that the the cost of that kind of punishment greatly outweighs the benefits of doing it. And again, this the science is clear. I can link in in 10 minutes, I can link you to study after study after study that shows that sure beating your child stopped him from throwing the eggs in the fridge on the floor to hear them crack. <laughs> He never did it again. But now your kid has, um, he has trust issues with authority figures. He also has a weird sexual proclivity to sexual violence. Like he has anxiety. Like there's all kinds of really, really nefarious, dark shit that happens when people. And again, if you don't have any of that stuff, great. But again, statistically speaking, like it, it's, it's actually really kind of nuts how how easily they can predict like, oh, you were hit as a kid? Do you like this by any chance? And people are like, yeah, I do. How'd you know that? Because you were hit as a kid. Like they literally can draw like a line. So again, I want to be clear that I'm not saying disciplining your kids is not an important thing, but, but I think one of the problems with punitive justice, hitting your kid because your kid broke a vase teaches your kid that to not get hit. But the point should be to teach your child why mm. they shouldn't want to break vases or tear their homework up or do drugs or whatever lesson you're trying to teach your yeah. kid, right? And, and again, I'm not trying to say that these, these can't be effective. Yeah, I'm sure there are things, there are things I did as a kid, but my point is, is that 
the, the, the things that I did as a child, and again, I'm not trying to hype like and say that my parents were perfect or better than anybody's or anything like that. I'm just saying there are methods you can use to instill values and morals into a child better because all you're teaching a kid when you hit them is, oh, if you do that thing, you'll get hit. I don't want to get hit, so I won't do that thing. You're not teaching them why it's wrong to do. Yeah. I and guess. and so, yeah, I, I mean, I think I've said my, my piece on this. Yeah. But this one is just really really important to me because this is not like the bride price thing like yeah we push back and forth and I can see where you're coming from on this right and I can be like all right fine but like when it comes to like childhood discipline yeah if it's you or anybody else I would not have kids with a woman who was okay with discipline now people make mistakes whatever but you know, and again that would be a serious conversation but if I if I if you were a person who was like oh yeah I could just like that's what you got to do. Like, I wouldn't be here. Like, that's how important it is to me, yeah, right? You so you got to reset your brain sometimes. Oh, I really hate when you say that. I know you're just saying it just to, to round out the video to get me all flustered. The the ring light makes me all pink and stuff. That's, oh that's God, not fair. I think we should just stop that Yeah, one. that's no, we said our We've piece. We've been talking for such a long time. And again, I, wanna, I don't know why I keep apologizing for long videos. I think personally it's because I personally don't like watching long videos on YouTube. <laughs> so I feel like there are lots of people like me. But anyways... Uh, we do hope however many this video is, it's worth your time. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up. Also, sound off in the comment section below. If you're African, if you're Nigeria, what do you think about these topics? Especially the bride price. That's one I'm very, very interested in. The bride price one? Mm, mm. In hearing about. And obviously, just everything we talked about. But yeah, that's Also, awesome. actually, on that note, if you guys have any information, like, like articles about bride price, I would love to read them. So link them in the comments. Because I know there's some feminist writers and stuff that have written about it. I'd like to learn more, but it's hard to, like, Google bride price and, like, find sources that yeah. are interesting or that are credible so if you have any information about that kind of stuff let me know that would be great i will happily read them okay so that will be all thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one bye thanks for paying attention Bye.